In this video, we're going to take a good look at custom fields when used on customer and supplier records. We're going to create some custom fields. We're going to filter customer and supplier lists by custom field. I'm going to show you how to update custom fields in bulk, how to export the data, and also how to use custom fields on emails and document templates. Custom fields are used for storing extra information that you can't fit in existing fields. And here we're looking at a contact record where we can see in the custom fields tab that we've got two further sub tabs called contract and diet. And every custom field you create lives within one of these tabs. You can see that custom fields are of different types. We've got dates, input boxes, yes, no, and select menus as well. This record is actually a customer, but exactly the same principles apply for suppliers as well. If you set a custom field up for a customer, it's not available for suppliers and vice versa. You can also see custom fields in the customer list and the supplier list. You can see here we've got contract active, contract renewal date and contract type. And to add columns like this to your contact list, go to your name and click my preferences. Select the custom fields you want to appear as columns, drag and drop to change the sort order and save changes when done. Creating custom fields is easy. Go to the setup area and then at the bottom of the left hand side choose either customers or vendors and it might be called suppliers in your account. You'll see here that we've got the two tabs that our custom fields are living within. We can see which tab the field is in here. Every custom field needs a code and that's used on templates. The field name which appears on the screen when you're editing the contact. The field type. Whether a user can edit this on the customer portal and then whether it's a required field and required fields have to have a value when you save every customer record or every supplier record. So use that only when it's absolutely necessary. Let's add a new field where we type the name, we choose which tab it gets added into, or if you wanted to create a new tab at this point, you could put the value in here. Give it a code, and this code can only contain letters and numbers. This code needs to be unique across all of your custom fields, including order and product custom fields. Choose the custom field type, and it can be freeform text, numeric, yes, no, select list, text area, or date. Make it required if you like, and then if you want it to be editable on the customer portal where they log in to see their information, choose yes. Otherwise, it'll be a private custom field that only you can see, and then save. If you choose select list as your custom field type, then you get a link here to edit the options or the values in that select menu. Here you can add and remove and edit values, and if you wanted to change the sort order, just drag and drop. In a similar way, if you wanted to drag and drop the sort order of the custom fields themselves, you can do so. If you wanted to see just the fields for a certain tab, click that tab. And this is also where we can delete and rename tabs. To find all customers or suppliers with a certain custom field value, go to your customer list, show the filter, and then in the extra filters, click to add a filter. And here you can see a number of standard fields. And then at the bottom, the list of custom fields. So let's say we want to show customers where contract type is monthly. Because contract type is a select menu, you can see we've got a field here where we can choose monthly and filter the report. Other custom fields work in a very similar way. So let's remove that and then add a custom field with say active. And because that's a yes, no custom field, we've got the option to find yes, no, or empty values. Contract notes is a text area. So what you'd do here is you'd probably choose where contract notes contains a certain value. Contract renewal date is a date format. So you can choose either an equal to or greater than or less than. If you want to filter by multiple values, click add filter again. This only supports and however, so watch out for that. Whenever you're searching for contacts, make sure that the contact filters here are relevant, especially the dates. You can either filter by customers or suppliers, because each of those two different contact types have got different custom fields. Now what we're going to do is update the custom field value for a number of contacts all at once. So you can see on the right hand side that only some of our customers have been assigned a contract type of monthly. What I'm going to do now is select all customers and then from the batch actions, choose to update custom fields and set everybody to have a contract type of annual. So let's update the contacts, which has now updated them all to annual. You can also do that by importing a spreadsheet. 
and there's a separate video that shows you how to update customers by importing an Excel file. If you want to export custom field data, do this from the customer list. Add the relevant custom columns using the options under My Preferences and then export to Excel. You can only do this for customers, there's no way to export custom field data for vendors. You can, however, get this data over the BrightPearl API. Finally, what we're going to do is we're going to see how you can use custom fields on document templates when those templates are used in conjunction with customers or suppliers. So let's say we've got some customers whose contract is up for renewal. I'd find all the contacts I wanted, select those contacts and choose to send an email. Here I can actually drop in a template that I've created earlier called contract renewal email where we can see the custom field codes inserted into this template. When I send this email, we can see on the timeline record of it that the values for those custom fields have been dropped in in place of the widgets. Here's the template itself. To add a custom field, simply put the cursor where you want it to go and then from this menu here, scroll down until you see Customer Custom Fields. Select one and it'll drop the widget code in for you. You can also add Customer Custom Fields onto Sales Order Templates and Supplier Custom Fields onto Purchase Order Templates. So here for example, we're adding the contract renewal date onto a customer's invoice. This will pull data from the relevant customer on that order. To finish up, here are some handy things to know about custom fields. There's no interaction between the fields themselves, so everything is entirely independent, there's no hierarchy or inheritance. Customer custom fields and order custom fields have no links. Make sure you use unique custom field codes, regardless of the custom field type, in other words whether it's for products, orders or customers. Custom field data can be read using the BrightPearl API. And don't create too many custom fields. Make sure you keep it simple and manageable. And that takes us to the end of the video where we look at customer and supplier custom fields.